getting questions about insects that people are finding around their yards and their gardens at this time of year. So here is a sample of some of those questions. The first one is about geranium budworms. Many gardeners, myself included, want to overwinter our geraniums so that we can continue to have those beautiful blooms next year. But some of us are finding that the leaves and the flowers have been chewed on. What we're seeing is damage from a geranium budworm sometimes called a tobacco, tobacco budworm. And even though their common name is a worm, these really aren't worms, they're actually caterpillars. And you will find them in several different colors. It depends on what they eat. If they're eating on a green leaf, they'll turn green. If they're eating on a pink bud, they will start to turn pink. These little critters, they usually hide under the soil during the day, but in the evening you can find them munching away on your plants. So the easiest way to get rid of them is just to pick them off when you find them. You can either squash them or drop them in soapy water. Pesticides are really not helpful with this pet at this time of year. Cheryl, when I was moving my geraniums around and my containers, I noticed that there was a lot of sow bugs underneath them. Um, is that going to be a problem? No, in fact, you're a lucky gardener. Um, oh. <laughs> they're good guys. Sow bugs and pill bugs are similar in their look and their names are sometimes inter used interchangeably. But the sow bug has a pair of tail-like appendages which project out from the rear of its body. And while the pill bug has no, ha the pill bug has no extreme posterior appendages and the pill bug's the one that can roll up into the tight ball when it's disturbed, which the kids just love. They're actually crustaceans and related to water-dwelling shrimp and crayfish. And they breathe through gills and therefore they need a moist environment to thrive, which is why they were hiding underneath your pot. They're most active at night and hide under, uh, in the day under rocks and, and in crevices. That's why the kids love to pick up ro rocks to see if there's an insect under there. <laughs> These busy insects eat decaying leaf litter and vegetable matter. They're some of nature's very best recyclers. They break up decaying plant material and help speed the return of the nutrients to the ecosystem. They're not harmful to the garden. And in fact, their presence indicates rich organic soil. If you feel like you're seeing like a great many sow bugs all collecting together, you can consider reducing the amount of your added compost. But a roly poly in your garden is, is a good thing. But Jane, I noticed before the rain started pouring down, um, some crane flies lurking around my backyard. Um, should I be worried about that? Well, Cheryl, that depends on a couple of things. If you have an unhealthy lawn or your lawn is saturated, your soil is saturated, you might be having a problem with the European crane fly. The winter larval stage of these European crane flies can cause extensive damage to your lawns because the insects feed on the turf grass faster than the turf grass is allowed to grow. Your above ground symptoms that you'll see include the thinning of the turf grass beginning around January, February, progressing to, uh, if it's really bad, you'll have a total loss of turf grass around April or May, in mostly in the low lying areas of your lawn. Um, proper turf grass management can substantially reduce the damage caused by this insect. So if you notice areas of thinning turf grass or you see damage by birds and other foraging animals because they like to go eat the larva that's underneath the soil, you, um, that may be a big clue that you have a high population. So in these areas, what you would do is you would take a square inch shovel like the photo, well, kind of like the photo shows, <laughs> and dig a section of sod one foot long, one foot wide, and one inch deep, and then flip it over. And if you can see more than 25 in this square, it, square foot area, you know that you have a big problem and you're going to definitely have to do something about it. Now the larva, you'll see that are, they're large, they're gray, they're legless maggots. And they have this finger-like appendage on the posterior end, but they don't have any well-defined head. They're often called leather jackets because if you pick one up and squeeze it, it is very, very tough. But if you use proper cultural practices like mowing, irrigation, fertilization, all those efforts to improve your soil, those things come first. 
Then if you've addressed those issues and you still continue to have a large count population, then you need to start applying some pesticides. For best results, you want to apply them during the winter months. If the spring applications will not prevent the damage because by that time, the majority of your turf is gone and the destruction is already there. So you wanna do it a little bit earlier. Make sure that you apply pesticides that are certified for use for homeowners. And applying the insecticide in the winter also substantially reduces the risk of exposing exposing pollinators such as honeybees and butterflies. These insects, they forage on the spring and summer blooming plants, so you don't want to have pesticides out there at that time. OSU has chemical recommendations for you that you can check on these websites. But also know that crane flies have many other natural enemies such as birds, bats, frogs, and beetles. And speaking of beetles, Cheryl, um, what do you know about them? Beetles, aren't they great? They come in all sizes. And they're such beautiful colors, shiny blue, black, purple, dark metal green, long legs, long antenna. They get your attention. Um, ground beetles are pre often very large insects, although they can come at, you know, tiny to one inch long. Um, they deposit their eggs one at a time under your garden debris in the spring. The larva grows for about a year before they pupate and emerge as adults. You seldom see the larva since they live in the soil and they do their feeding at night. They don't look like the adult beetle at all, but they are voracious eaters and they need twice as much food as the adult. Um, there are thousands of different species of ground beetles in uh, the US. And despite their fierce appearance, the ground beetle is every gardener's friend. The adult beetle is a random hunter. He roams at night and eats any suitable life form. And that includes cutworm larvae, slug and snails from their eggs all through their juvenile stages. Unfortunately, they don't discriminate and they do take the occasional earthworm, but they can be forgiven for all the good they do. You will want to take precautions and protect um, it from unnecessary chemicals because this is a beneficial insect that you definitely want living in your garden. But I am noticing some insects that are very colorful all over the size of my house. And do I need to worry about those uh, guys getting in? Well, getting into your house is not going to be any fun at all. With those red and black bugs that you find, you find them on the warm side outside of your house or coming into your home. Those are box elder bugs, very common in our area. Um, they are a big nuisance. We don't like them, but luckily they're not causing any damage um, to your home. They do not sting and they do not bite and they do not transmit diseases. So that's a good thing. They're often found on the sunny side, exterior side of your home. The bug, this bug gets its name because during the spring and summer, the box elder bugs feed and reproduce on the seeds of the box elder tree. But occasionally they can also feed on other maples or ash and sometimes even on fruit trees. But as winter approaches, these box elder bugs, they want to seek out shelter from the cold. So that's why they're looking for the warm side of your house or inside of your house. They can fly up to two miles uh, to find a suitable location. And some people say, well, I'm going to get rid of all the maple trees in my yard so the box elder bugs go away. Well, that's not going to work. They can fly up to two miles just to find your home. So what you want to do if they are on the outside of your home, it's the best way to do it is to take a shop vac and just vacuum them off as much as you can. They do have an odor if you squish them, so you want to be very careful about that. To keep them from coming inside of your home, try to keep them away from, you know, put uh, chalk around your windows and your doors and your screens, just so that they don't have a way to enter through your, through your home. And Cheryl, we not only had had question about box elder bugs, but people have been asking about other type of insects that are inside of their homes. Ooh, thanks, Jane. <laughs> These guys are not my favorite. There are a number of pests that fall under the heading of pantry pests. Could be ants, flower beetles, flower moss, and weevils. And it's really important that you identify the problem insect before you try to eliminate them so you have the proper target target uh, thing that you're doing. But probably the most um, commonly seen in pantry pest is the Indian meal moth. They lay their eggs on stored food and grain. And if you find an adult moth flying around in your kitchen, or if you open a cupboard and a little moth flies out, 
there's a, there's a sign that you might have some infested items in your home. The adult female can lay hundreds of eggs, which they deposit on or near a food source. The damage is done by the larva, and these guys are wily. They can chew through plastic bags and thin cardboard, so even unopened packages can be infested. They attack a wide variety of products, include cereal, grain, beans, nuts, flour, dried fruit, bird seed, dry animal food, chocolate, spices, and candies. Some tips for prevention are to use, that to use up your older food products first and store all bulk food in a glass or sturdy plastic container. Um, clean up all your spills. You have to be kind of a, a bear about that, particularly if you've had an infestation, including all flour and sugar, even a small amount in a corner or under a baseboard, they will, they'll be able to survive on that. Do not use Ziploc bags for storage since the larva can chew right through the plastic. If you have an infestation, identify, remove, and dispose of all infested food items. Their larva do spin a little web and, and they leave behind silken threads. So if you notice any signs of webbing or clumps of grain or flour, that, that may be a sign that insects are present. Take the interior bag out of your cereal, like the cereal is the first thing I think of, and roll them around looking for clumps or webbing. And check the corners of the boxes uh, and the creases of the bags. After removing all the infested items, vacuum using a crevice attachment and make sure to clean out the corners and wash all surfaces with warm water uh, and soap to remove any remaining spilled food, eggs, or cocoons. And if you have a, a pantry that has those adjustable shelves, as many of us do, be sure and check those little peg holes. Perfect place for them to hide out. Not fun. Uh, they can travel pretty far from the food source to pupate. So that can create a potential for reinfestation. So after you've disinfected everything, remain vigilant. Uh, once food items are secured in glass or sturdy plastic and you have thoroughly cleaned, you should be free of the pest. It gives new meaning to cleaning out the pantry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, so now I was walking around my garden and noticed some notches in the leaves of my heuchera. Jane, has anybody else had that problem? Ah, yes, actually we did. We had a question. We received an inquiry about the damage on the leaves of a heuchera plant, but the lady did not send a picture. It wasn't included with the question. So as a result, we can't say exactly what her problem was. But from the description, it sounded like it was a root weevil problem. Root weevils, they feed on a variety of plants, including needled and broadleaf evergreens, deciduous and herbaceous plants, and even some food crops. The adult beetle feeds on the leaves, the host plant, and then the larva, they are, they're the ones that are chewing on the roots. The larval root weevils look like white grubs or worms, and they can be found underneath the soil. If you're lucky, you can find them under there. The adult weevils are small, dark beetles with, they have a snout. You can see from that photo, they have a larger snout than a normal beetle does. They also have an elbowed antenna, and they can be black, brown, or gray. And since they feed at night, you may only see the damage and not the insect. The weevils can't fly, so distribution is through migration and movement of infested pots or soil or other debris that you move from one area to another. They're slow moving, and they can't. You shouldn't confuse them with those predaceous ground beetles that Cheryl talked about earlier. I've included a link. There's a link on this page that describes the beetles, and it's important to accurate, accurately identify what the pest is before you do any type of take any type of action. You would do control of the adults. You would do that in late May or June because that's when you would start to see them. For the, and you will notice they're there because you'll start seeing the first signs of the notching on the leaves. The fall is the time that you can begin to control the larval stages. And there are several ways to do that. Too much to get into right now. So I really suggest that you to go to the Oregon State University publications that can give you all of that information. They have strategy controls for both the adults and for the larval stages. So that's all the questions we have for today. Thanks for joining us and have a good day, everyone. Bye.